Nightmare Ariola, and you're watching Mission Boxing Today on YouTube. Heavyweight boxing fans, what's the deal? All right, man, so let me just uh, go ahead and uh, share this article with you guys. It's uh, J Joshua says a win over Klitschko won't make him world's best. All right, I'm going to leave this article in the description box. And uh, if you want to take a look at it for yourself, you can click it, read it, come to your own surmise about it. Let me read a little bit of this. All right, so now this is just Joshua answering questions about the, you know, the up, big upcoming fight, unification fight with um, future Hall of Famer Vladimir Klitschko. He says, you have to unify the division to gain that respect, Joshua said. But I do think you gain a level of respect that can't be denied. Joshua added, this beating Klitschko would definitely put you in a pedestal for sure. But I would never claim to be the universal heavyweight champion because I've never unified the division. That's a status in itself. So in my opinion, I need to do a bit more work before I can claim that. Joshua, regardless, recognizes the victory he expects to earn at Wembley could signal the end of Vladimir's career with the 40-year-old bidding to avoid back-to-back -back defeats. Asked of the likelihood of him retiring one of the finest heavyweight champions in history, he responded, very possible. There's no doubt about it. If I fight as long as Vladimir, I have another 14 years left. And he can't possibly have another 14 years left. I can definitely push him aside and create a pathway for me to reign for a long time. All right. And he goes on to say, um, as yet again, the bigger fighter, Klitschko's greatest asset on April 29th is likely to be the consistent concussive jab that has given him such a level of control against so many opponents. But Joshua has already been focusing on how to negate his challenger biggest strength. And Joshua says, look at Evander Holyfield versus Buster Douglas. He said, I'm going to double jab him, said Joshua. Soon he picked him apart. Now, let me just add this. All right. Yes, he did. Holyfield did a damn good job in that fight. Um, he probably would have beat Douglas had Douglas showed up in shape. But D Douglas did not was not using that jab the same way he fought against Tyson. I hate when guys do that, man. I understand styles make fights. But when a guy has a, a big win like how Douglas did against Tyson. It is not just the magnitude of the win. It was how he fought the fight. He was mentally there. He was in shape. He was pumping out the jab. He was just, he was a lot more active, a lot more in control. Um, I know Holyfield was a different type of fighter than Tyson, but still, man, that Douglas didn't show up that night. All right, that's a sidebar. All right, so back to this. Um, Joshua goes on to say, you can either jab with a jabber or you can take the jab away from a jabber with the parry, the slip, the feint. The heavyweight division, when I came around, they have all been tall. Vladimir had a lot of wide and stocky opponents. I learned how to jab with people, double it up, and deal with their range. I'm not the best I'll be yet, but I have learned and can definitely throw a double jab. When you take away one of his main weapons, what'll be next? It'll be interesting. All right, um, you know, when I spoke, you know, now, as, as far as uh Joshua dealing with, with, uh, Vladimir's jab and taking it away um I think he's you know at least from what he's saying he's putting together a, a good game plan as far as doubling up the jab I've seen Pulev be able to go jab for jab with Vladimir up until a point um so you know it's not like what he's saying is unthinkable um and yes you can take it away with the slipping and um feints and, and parry everything that josh was saying he's saying the right thing it's just a difference between getting there and fight night and trying to execute it uh but you know like i said pull was able to have a fencing match with vladimir you know so um but pull has a damn good jab himself though um but what i was going to say was when i spoke to the trainer of eric molina he was telling me how how impressed he was with um joshua's left hand well even he's saying eric was telling him how he was in the ring with him and he was impressed with the left hand um that the joshua has developed as far as using the jab and uh you know being able to throw hooks and uppercuts with that left hand and using it as a tool not just the jab but to you know land some good leads and vladimir not only do you have to take away his jab his right hand too but he likes to set everything up with his jab you know emmanuel used to you know, bury that in his mind, man, to set up everything with your jab. Emmanuel told all his big heavyweights to do that. But and if you do take that away from Vladimir, it could, you know, it could be odd for him. But he is a future Hall of Famer, and maybe he has something else in store. Um, and what if 
Anthony can't take away the jab, then what? If he can't take away Vlad's jab, he's going to lose this fight. Unless he throws a Hail Mary. It is the heavyweight division, but if he can't take away Vladimir's jab, if Vladimir is able to dictate and control the pace and the range, um, he's going to jab him to death. I think Vladimir can do that until he's 70. You know what I mean? So, But that's just me. That's just me. Um, yeah, man, just wanted to share this article with you guys, man. Just some heavyweight news just to, you know, talk about some other topics man you guys let me know what you think about the article do you think that you know josh was going to be able to to, to parry and, and faint and control and double up on jabs and out jab vladimir or do you think he's going to out jab him or do you think he's going to take away the jab with his timing you know timing can disrupt the jab too you know and um i don't know man it's gonna be, i cannot wait for this fight man but you guys let me know what you think in the comment section i'm out